In front of you is a picture taken by the Hubble telescope. The brightest point is a galaxy called the Sunburst Arc, or PSZ1 G311.65-18.48. The second brightest point in the picture is the same galaxy, as is the third, fourth, and fifth. In fact, all 12 points are in the same galaxy. It seems as if a cosmic Xerox appeared in the universe. How did these 12 copies of one galaxy appear in space? And how many more fake twins can we observe? Let's start by shining a flashlight into the night sky. You probably won't be surprised finding out that a ray of light directed straight into space will not fall back. Even the phrase that the beam falls back onto the ground sounds strange in itself. But under earthly conditions, this is indeed how it goes. Light quanta, at their super powerful speed, can easily move in a straight line right into space, attempting to leave the Earth. However, there are objects in space that are able to directly change the trajectory of light by the influence of their gravity. Black holes, for example, are capable of absorbing any light completely, while other objects are able to distort the flow of light significantly. Imagine that a street light outside of your window is shining directly into your eyes, preventing you from sleeping at night. So you get up, open the window, and with your hand, push the ray of light to the side. It's fiction, of course. However, everything happens in a similar way at the galactic level. Massive space bodies bend rays of light, increasing the intensity of the light for a long distance behind them. There's a pretty significant distance of 11 billion light years between the Earth and the galaxy with the 12 copies. The most important thing is that this huge space of 11 billion light years in distance is not empty at all. This space is filled with clusters of galaxies so massive that with their gravitational field, they're capable of changing the trajectory of a ray of light. The ray of light doesn't fall due to the great speed of the photons. For an outside observer, it will seem that the light is only bending towards a massive object, or alternatively, goes around it. In physics, this process is called gravitational lensing. Its essence is that massive objects can bend electromagnetic radiation in the same way as ordinary lenses do with light rays. Only, as opposed to an optical lens, gravity works a little differently. Gravity exerts greater influence on the light which passes closer to the center of the object and less on the rays located farther from it. In the case of the Sunburst Arc Galaxy, the light is bent immediately in several directions. It resulted in four main arcs, three in the upper right corner and one in the lower left corner of the picture. Thanks to these arcs, scientists from Earth can see 12 light copies of one galaxy. However, many of the duplicates are 10 to 30 times brighter than the original. After all, the galaxy itself is rather dull, which has made studying it complicated. However, thanks to the copies, we're able to see objects inside the galaxy measuring only 520 light years, which is very small on a universal scale, and 203 times smaller than the diameter of the Milky Way. The Sunburst Arc is the brightest galaxy to undergo gravitational lensing, but far from the only one. Indeed, to date, astronomers have discovered about 100 gravitational lenses. This means if you grab a telescope right now and look at the night sky, you can see many copies of distant objects. In order for the galaxy to act as a gravitational lens, its mass should be at least a trillion, that's 10 to the 12th power solar masses. Although for stars, this figure is much smaller. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is just suitable for such purposes. Its total mass reaches about 1.5 trillion. That's 1.5 times 10 to the 12 solar masses. That is, almost any object observed outside our galaxy 
will most likely be visually split for terrestrial telescopes. Why bother with telescopes? Sometimes you can even see everything with the naked eye. When you look at the starry sky at night, a copy, not the original, is often what catches your naked eye. This proves the experiment of Arthur Eddington, an English physicist who made his colleague Albert Einstein incredibly popular. As early as 1919, Eddington decided to test Einstein's theory about large objects bending space. While observing a solar eclipse on the island of Principe, Eddington discovered that the light of a star that appeared next to the sun was actually curving and extending on a slightly different path. That is, the star itself was not in the place where the scientist discovered its light. Thus, this confirmed all of Einstein's predictions on the matter, bringing him to world fame. Two types of gravitational lensing are known today, the Einstein ring and the Einstein cross. If the light of a distant object reaches the observer through a compact galaxy and it's located on the same line between the Earth and the light source, then the object visually increases and turns from a point into a circle, that is, a ring. If light passes through, for example, a spiral galaxy, then we'll see the cross of Einstein. In the center of this image, you can see a spiral galaxy acting as a lens. The four points around it are four copies of one quasar located behind the lens galaxy. There's also a fifth copy, but it's practically invisible. So all together, including the galaxy itself and the quasar, they make up the gravitational lens G2237-0305. The light source, that is, the quasar itself, is located at a distance of 8 billion light years from us, while the lensing galaxy is located 20 times closer, only 400 million light years from Earth. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is also a spiral galaxy. Therefore, when rays of light pass through it, they are deflected, creating the image of a cross. Some other large objects are not large enough to have the status of a massive gravitational lens and can only cause microlensing. In this case, light copies are not formed. Only short-term light flashes are formed which are detected by special devices or may not be noticed at all. It's worth noting that the existence of gravitational lenses only confirms the general theory of relativity, according to which not only light is curved, but even space-time itself. Einstein was the first to raise the idea of space-time as a kind of fabric. Any objects, including supermassive galaxies, black holes, stars, and planets distort this fabric. It's for this reason that gravity works as it does. Try pulling some fabric tight and place a heavy object on it. Then toss a ping-pong ball on the fabric and the ball will begin to rotate around the heavy center along the curve of the fabric. It all depends on the ratio of their masses. The same thing happens on a large scale. The moon constantly falls to the Earth along the curved lines of space-time. The Earth falls towards the Sun and the solar system to the center of the galaxy. Since time is closely related to space, it's also curved by large objects. The closer you are to a massive object, the more time slows down. Near a black hole, it can stop altogether. And in open space, time will flow rather quickly. Perhaps the most important advantage of gravitational lenses is that thanks to supermassive galaxies distorting the light, we can observe dim, distant objects. And so far, this is the only possible way. Even our Sun, despite its relatively small mass, can also act as a gravitational lens. With the help of our star, it was possible to observe planetary-sized objects located at a distance of 100 light-years from Earth. According to the Italian physicist Lorenzo Maccone, the Sun's ability to bend light of distant objects allows you to get more detailed images than thousands of telescopes combined. 
It's likely that if you look at our solar system from a distance of several million light years, you can also see copies of it. What do you think? If extraterrestrial civilizations exist, will they be able to find us guided by light copies of our solar system? Let us know in the comments. If you like my video, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell so you don't miss any new releases, and give us a thumbs up. Share this video with your friends. It's much more interesting discussing these topics together.